Production equipment can benefit from communicating from a barcode reader, 2D or 3D vision systems to a control system. Hi, I'm Cam Patel, the vision specialist for Retico. And I'm Chris Coe, an automation specialist for Retico. We're going to demonstrate a Cognex vision system communicating to a Rockwell Automation, HMI and PLC. Then we're going to show you how we set it up. We have our Cognex camera, we have our Rockwell Compact Logics PLC and PanelView Plus HMI, with Vision View installed onto the HMI. And the parameters from the PLC here and echoed on the HMI here. The vision view on the HMI shows the status of the camera and we can change some settings also. But we're going to get the PLC to trigger the camera by the use of the HMI push button, watching the values change in the vision view and in the PLC program. You'll notice the job pass tag and also the vision view stating a pass. If we change the position of the subject and trigger again, we can see the values have changed here, here and here, and we still have a job pass. Now we trigger again and we can see a fail. The image is there, but we no longer have a job pass. We have some values, but they might not be useful now as the job has failed. And if we try again, we can still see it failing in a different position with new values. This section of the video shows what needs to be done in the Cognex software to be able to extract data to a PLC. I will firstly create a simple job to obtain X and Y coordinates and then show a presence and absence check. The camera has already been calibrated and the lighting has been adjusted. To begin with, I will use the locate tool to obtain the X and Y coordinates of the Retico logo. I will then do a presence check on the telephone number. We can see that the coordinates and the pattern match are displayed under the palette section and these will change as I move the card around. I will also introduce a card without a telephone number to prove we have a failure. Once we are happy with the setup of our job, we then need to set up our communication. Under the Communications tab, we can select the appropriate PLC we require. The data that is required into the PLC can be selected from the Format Output Data tab. Just by clicking the Add button, we can choose the information we require. Also under the communication tab, if required, we can set up the easy view for, for information out to the PLC.
Once we are happy with the setting of the required information, we next need to select the appropriate trigger mode. The default mode will be camera, but to trigger via a PLC, we would need to change this to industrial ethernet option. We then need to save the job. Just a quick note for the section for the next section of the video, we do have a second job here named measurement. The very last thing we need to do is to set up the camera into online mode. Now the camera is PLC ready, over to Chris. Firstly, we need to go to the Cognex website and download the add-on profile. This will give you the installation files so that the Cognex cameras are included in the Rockwell programming software. Run the installation files. All add-on profiles are already installed on my machine, so we'll just complete the process. Now open up the Logix Designer or RS Logix 5000 software and the program. To add the Cognex camera, right mouse click on the Ethernet port and select New Module. Select Cognex in the vendor filter and find the correct part number. Press the Create button and the New Module dialog box appears. Give it a name and use the IP address that has been allocated to the camera. You can change the data structure and revision if need be, but we'll leave it as default. Now download to the PLC. The I.O. light is solid, there are no faults on the camera in the Ethernet tree, we're working. So let's go look at the data in the controller tags. The control data to the camera and the status data from the camera. Now we'll look at triggering a job change in the camera by pressing an HMI button. Press the job 1 button, it goes offline for a moment and then is changed. Same for switching to measurement job. The camera does go offline for a moment, then it changes to measurement job and comes back online. There is a delay where the camera is not operational between job changes. Now let's look at the PLC code. This is a variant of the Cognex code provided on their website. The first two lines are just for the business card X and Y position. The trigger enable has to be high to allow the PLC to trigger. The next information is about changing the job. On rung 7, we have a message block that sends an ASCII string of the job name seen in our demonstration to the barcode reader to change the job. It is a CIP generic message and the class, instance and attribute we have obtained from the Cognex documentation 78, 1 and 14. The length will be changed by our code. In the communications tab, set the path for the Cognex camera. The ASCII string is held in a tag and can be changed to the job name set in the camera. Back in the PLC code, we are executing a state routine that makes sure everything happens in an order. If I trigger a job change, if we are in state 1 or fault state of 91, then it allows the program to move to state 11 
and unlatch the trigger. Whenever we are not in state one, we always set the camera to offline, ready to receive a job change. As we are in state 11 and it has confirmed the camera is offline, we prepare the data to send to the camera. Our ASCII string varies length of characters, so we put the amount of characters into the first two bytes of the array of data that we will send to the camera. We then take 22 characters of ASCII and put them in the following 22 bytes of characters in the array. We then trigger the message. Once that message is done, we move to a camera state of 21, or if the message block errors, it moves to a state of 91. We repeat this all for the measurement job, but using different states as it moves through the process. And once this is done, we move it to state 21, or state 91. And at state 21, it just puts a 5 second delay as it takes a moment for the camera to process that the job has changed. Once that time is finished, we move the code back to state 1. And state 1 sets the camera back online. So this is the code that we use to job change. Now let's look how we put the vision view into the panel view plus. Open up the Cognex vision view downloads website and search Rockwell. We can see 1.68 at the time of this video is the latest revision and so we're going to download both the instruction and the installation files. Here are the files and the installation instructions which we open up. The part we're interested in from the installation is which files are going to be needed to put onto the panel view plus which we will see in a minute. It also tells us the directory where we're going to find these files. The installer does not give us a shortcut to run a program, it's just going to populate the files onto the hard drive. Now installed, let's open the correct folder, which is this one here. So program files, x86, cognex, vision view, cesl 1.6.8, then Rockwell. And we have documentation with application, release notes and help. We have the cab install files for HMI and some sample applications, which I've used in my demonstration. You should be familiar with restoring an APA file back to the Factory Talk View software. But we're interested in the CAD files and we're using the Panel Plus 6 which is the x86 CAD file onto a USB stick. I'll now show you the HMI screen on my PC using VNC. Plug the USB stick into the HMI and install the Cognex software. You will need desktop access onto the HMI to install this. You can see the vision view is now installed on the desktop and you can run it as an application.
It will automatically pick up Cognex devices it is compatible with, including barcode readers. So we will exit Vision View for a moment and we'll go back to the Factory Talk View application. This is a sample application included with the Vision View download. I've added two parts into here. The first part, some scan information and a trigger to take an image. And then the job change trigger. This is all data in the PLC tags. The Vision View is called from this ActiveX that cannot be seen on the display. If you need to add an ActiveX, it is done so by selecting Objects, then ActiveX Control. Draw a rectangle onto the screen, then choose the ActiveX Control. In this case, we are going to use ME Program Launcher. And set it to launch the Vision View application. And this is the information we have to fill in to enable it to do so. So let's look at one we've already set up, starting with some tags that the program launcher will use in the HMI tags. Which we see again used in the program launcher ActiveX. We have the program location for the executable file, the bounds determine where in the XY coordinate on screen it appears and the size, the focus brings it to the front and the launch is to start the application whilst the new instance makes sure that we don't open it up twice by being set to zero. You have the option to close the vision view if you no longer wish to run it. You could also use macros to trigger the tags when opening or closing the screen. So download the application to HMI and run it. Remember, you do not see the ActiveX on the development. Only when you run it on the runtime will you see the application load up. And if we look in the program launcher, we have the tags, and those tags are tied to the button in this example for launch, close, and show vision view. There is our launch, there is our close, and show. Okay, tutorial finished. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, let us know in the comments. Now get innovating.